Hello and welcome to Digital Fabrication Residency Tutorial Series. For this video, we're going to focus on inlay and stencil. When I say stencil, it's using the same techniques that you would use in a stencil, but also pretty much it's to bring the shapes together using a lattice, um, a lattice you know, configuration of lines. Um, the reason why we're doing this is because Sometimes it's easier just to have one shape plug into the other shape instead of a bunch of little teeny pieces that you have to take the time to put them in and make sure that they lock into each other. And also when image trace does what it does, it doesn't make things symmetrical. So this piece right here, or this piece right here, probably won't fit into this piece right here. Um, so you can see also at the bottom, you can see this little divot here so image trace off of the raster made this this uh, little different shape and up here it's more rounded so if i took this it wouldn't go there so another feature that's quite nice about this process is that there's kind of only one way or only four possibilities that this shape can go into itself so you know like i would you know if i rotated it this four times one of those four times it would fit in there um, so that's kind of the benefit. So it is stencil, but it's also just kind of combining shapes together and using that, um, you know, using that to cut in, cut out the shapes that, that inlay nice to each other. So we're just going to start looking at it. And so, you know, image trace method inlay to stent, um, inlay and stencil. Uh, it's pretty much the same workflow, but we're, instead of a, a budding, we're uh, doing the overlapping again, so it's a little bit easier. Um, but there's a couple more, there's a couple steps in there that we haven't talked about. So pretty much uh, this is our shape after it is um, traced. And we're going to add these um, lines to create a lattice. And then after that, we're going to group it together and then knock it out of another shape. And then we're going to offset it like we did before. So we're going to, the thing that, things that we're going to cover new is pretty much under Windows and Pathfinder, which is over here. And it's just kind of, uh, in another video, I go through Align, Transform, and Pathfinder. Very simple tools, but always used over and over again. When you're dealing with laser cutting or machining, a lot of the things in Illustrator you do not need. A lot of the effects or, um, you know, some of the fancy things are great, but they create a lot of bad lines and you have to spend more time cleaning up than if you were just to sit there and do it with a pen tool or image trace. So that said, we're going to look at this. So again, we're just doing the overlapping. So there's not going to be a knockout of the other shape. It's just that. And that is creating two things it's creating um it's actually creating one thing apologize and it's going to create a shape and the outside shape so down here we have three things that we're kind of focusing on so we have inside shape outside shape and stencil lattice and that lattice that i made pretty much just with the pen tool and the circle tool and um, I show, I'm showing you two different things, um, one that worked and one that didn't work. So before we go into the thing that does work, actually, I'm going to show you the thing that I thought that would work, but it does not, does not work. So, you know, I had these circular full circles along the whole thing, and then I had these spokes coming out. And I was like, oh, this should be completely fine. It should work. And then I did the process, and long behold, um, it's just not, it, it didn't hold it together. So there was still pieces that were segmented off that a, after I cut would fall out. So it's more of a, you know, it's more of a puzzle versus a technical skill on how to do something in Illustrator. It's more kind of how you're going to place your structure or your stencil lines to make sure that everything is connected. So here you can see um, this was a no-go. And this is a go. So you can see that pretty much everything is stays together inside here um, based off of this shape. So we're going to go through the process. One thing I'm going to do is I, I make my circle and then to cut any, if I want to 
cut my circle up or anything else like that, I use the scissor tool, which is underneath the eraser tool, and then it pretty much, you know, lets me cut a line up so I just made a circle and then sliced off those sections and then I have these lines that are here and these uh, partial arcs and these so right now the goal is to connect all these free-floating entities together so I have you know these things there's not one floating shape in this so after I do that and then I create my outside shape, or once I do the image trace, the image trace will give me that outside shape also. So I have these three elements. I have the outline, inside shape, the outside shape, and then the stencil lattice. And then these are the three elements, and we're just going to show you how I combine them to get the shape that I want. So here, one thing that's quite nice, if I click on it and then I want to select all the similar weight line I can go to select and then I can say same and then I can say stroke weight and that just selects everything like that um, I could also just click and drag but if this shape was if this was over more of a complicated shape like this then it's kind of irritating I have to kind of be very careful while I'm selecting instead of just selecting one and then going select, same, and then stroke, um, stroke weight. So at that point, what I want to do is several things. I want to outline the stroke. I don't want, right now it's basically giving me one vector line in the middle, but I'm more interested in the whole shape in its entirety. So I select everything, and then go to object, and then go to path, and then go to outline stroke, and then what that does is it just outlines everything. And this is still problematic because it's not one consistent shape. It's not one, I'm not, it's not, not one line going around everything. So that's where Pathfinder comes in. And what I want to do is in Pathfinder shape modes, I want to combine or unite both of them. So I unite them and now I have one shape that's there. The next thing that I want to do is maybe kind of get it right and at that point it's a little bit off but there we go um, and at that point what I want to do is select all of my other shape and then the lattice and then combine those two and I have one shape that then I can use as a stamp to knock out the negative space over here so if I click and then I just drag it over and I can select both of them and go up here and say align horizontal and vertical. Now I know it's in the center. And at that point, I want to minus the front from the back. If you have done this in a different order and you only see a white thing, so arrange, bring to front, then you might be frustrated, be like, what, how can I you know, subtract something from the front when the thing is behind. So if you just um, click on your uh, um, shape, right click, arrange, and then bring to um, send to back, then you want to make sure that this is above that. So you press select, select both of them, and then you can go over here and say minus front. And at that point, I have that selected from there. But let me just rewind for two seconds and actually, you need to make sure that you make a copy of this. And I did that by pressing the Alt button or just copy and paste. And now I have this shape and I have the, the inside shape that's going to, this outside inside shape is gonna get cut out of this square. And then I can go and minus the front and then I'll just do default um, when it comes to the stroke and the fill. So now I have the two parts that I need. So at this point, I can do the exact same thing that I did before, but this is just a little bit of, this is, there's no right or wrong way to do this next part, but you can, it depends on the design. So if there's something that's very small, it has very thin features um, on this piece, then sometimes, or this piece, you might want to offset 
one part that is more delicate than the other because if you're going to inset it or you're going to have a delicate piece you want to thicken it up so you can either offset um, this shape or that shape you don't want to offset both of them but you can do one or the other depending on what's you know more detail or not and this is really just the design drives that decision where you would have to do one or two kind of tests for that so after that you would sit there and offset it like we did before and then you would still again have four pieces per shape so like I said before, you would have an orange outside, inside, and a blue inside, um, outside, inside. And then you would cut all four, and then they would fit together. So that's generally how you would create a stencil using the combine and then minus the front. We also kind of covered select either stroke or uh, fill and stroke, which is helpful, or stroke weight. To, to select everything if it's uh, amongst a bunch of different shapes. And that is the end of the three, uh, you know, basically tutorials. One, just pretty much simple, how do I get a raster in and how do I cut it? To inlay, to inlay and stencil. For more video tutorials about learning what is possible with digital fabrication, come over to digitalfabrication.com. Also, if you have an idea about something that you would like to fabricate, check out artdesignfabrication.com.